Woo, yes. I love that Glenn, Glenn said, uh, his name is Studs Turkel, which I love it. So it's so fancy. I just call him Studs Turkel. But you know, I'm from Jersey, so that's how we do. Oh, uh, working that score is is really outrageous. But it's just like, you know, it's James Taylor, it's Steven Schwartz, it's uh, someone else. That, uh, I can't do it. If I could have been, though, that song, If I Could Have Been, What I Could Have Been, is so uh, Mickey Grant. Oh, I did it. I, my haze broke and I came through. It's Mickey Grant. She owes me a little something. Um, yeah, working is fantastic. And they just did a, uh, a new production in London and Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote two new songs, which, which are really great. So that's the end of my working story. Aren't you interested? Um, here we go. Shall we, shall we move on, George? Hello. Oh, hi. How are you, Jerry? Was I supposed to? I'm so. You guys, first of all, this is the love. Of we just pop. You know, we just pop in when we want to. I really. Just, no, listen. Am I fired? Is it over? No, 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 absolutely not, Julie. You're you're muted right now, Julie. I am muted. <laughs> <laughs> this is Julia going, yeah, baby, 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 yes, and Travis Leland. Jerry, we, we just were wondering if you wanted to introduce our special guest who just made it on the stream and is able to oh. come and say hi to us tonight. Oh my God, okay, here's the deal. I got to do Godspell, choreograph Godspell this summer at the Berkshire Theater Group, the only equity approved musical in the country. And this man who wrote it was the most generous and giving and loving and caring, and we don't see that a lot. And I'm just so happy that he got to join us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Schwartz. Hello. Hello. Hey, nice to see you. Last time I saw you was in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. I know. We, so, know. we do. We get around. Jerry did, I have to say, that he did such inventive staging for this production of Godspell because of course it had to be socially distanced and they had to follow all these equity guidelines. So there were like plexiglass screens between the actors and the act. There was, there was mask choreography about when they had their masks on and when they took the masks down. And, but what Jerry did with the, uh, with the director as well, which was so clever is that even though no one ever touched and there were never any of those big group moments of everybody like, you know, picking each other up and doing things to one another that there always are in Godspell. The way he staged it made you feel like they were, like you were still seeing an ensemble show. It was so cleverly done. Um, and it was, it was very, very moving <laughs> to me to see it as Jerry knows, sort of unexpectedly moving after six months of not seeing any live theater at all it was it was really fantastic so thank you for that again jerry thank you Stephen. we're so glad we could get you on here tonight. yeah i just i just made it i was yeah. i was uh seeing my parents on long island and helping them with some stuff and but i like you know drove quickly up route 684 and got here and back to Ridgefield, Connecticut in time to be with you guys. So here we are. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Yeah, you too, Travis. Yeah. So Jerry, what was what was the, the biggest challenge for you with this production of Godspell? How, you know, uh, it's talk, the, us, talk us through something. It's the not, you know, the, you know, Godspell is usually, you know, <laughs> very like circles holding hands and, you know, <laughs> you know, the, the thing at the end, when Jesus usually they do this great lift that I was just gonna steal, you know, Lord of God, and they raise him up and they take him through the audience. We couldn't do any of that, so it was just we just had to be, you know, what you you have to be clever in a different way. And I I I I keep saying that it was less like creative and more math for my brain mm -hmm. to figure out. Okay, they're six feet apart. They're both facing out. They can't face each other and sing. So. You know, and if they're singing, they have to be 10 feet apart. 
So it was just more math for me. And you know, you know the thing about it that I just never said no. Like they said, you want to do it? I was like, of course. So you know, that's what we do. You know, just go. All right. Well, here we go. And that the New York Times was there every day, like behind us, writing an wow. article about it, which was also just like, oh, just a lot. And then, of course, my friends who are lovely to say, oh, my God, everybody's watching you. I hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> the L.A. Times, too. The L.A. Times wrote about it, you know, and came and covered it. It, it, it was national news because it was the only show. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, I now, mean, I, I went to the last performance. I was going to go to one earlier, and um, it was canceled because of thunderstorms in the area, <laughs> because it was in a tent in the parking lot behind the theater where they were originally going to present it. Um, so I thought, like, well, if I can't make this performance, I'll just go to the last one, because that will be emotional. Little did I know how emotional. But at the end, the whole cast did a group hug, which I'm sure they're not supposed to do, and probably never did in any other performance. But then everybody in the audience was weeping, and it just was, yeah, it was fantastic. Jerry, you did such a clever job. It was, it was really delightful. Thank you again for it. Thank you. I, the thing that I have to say about it is, the first, you know, we did it. We had like two weeks of rehearsal, just craziness. And then we just didn't know. We, and we never had an audience. So the first audience was, you know, they were silent. They were nervous because they haven't gone to the theater at all, even outdoors. So they were, everyone was sitting and I could see the back of their shoulders. Everyone was sitting in that plastic like, like this. So they were so <laughs> nervous. And then the, the, the cast of Godspell and the audience burst into applause and people were standing up and I don't, I mean, that's it for me. That was it for me. That's, well, that's what theater does. That's what we can do. It was so amazing just to see the audience just finally, they got to see some live theater and they, the joy they had and, you know, they were relaxed finally. Cause these yeah. Uh, you know, I walked into the tent where, where it was fine. I didn't know what to expect. And, and so you walk into this tent and, and they have like, they, they set up chairs quite far apart from one another. And like, if, if three people bought tickets together, then there were like three little chairs over here. And then if another couple bought, then there were two chairs over here and a, a single over there. And I walked in and I was like, oh no, this is so depressing. <laughs> and you know, everybody scattered apart and I thought like, oh, it's not gonna feel like an audience at all. But then it's exactly what Jerry said. The cast came out, everybody applauded. The sound of the applause sort of rang through the whole place. And you just felt like, oh yeah, I'm I'm in a live audience again. And of course, when they were there was laughter, and it just sort of rang and echoed through the whole thing. So yeah, it was. I I was I was worried about it until it started, and then it was fantastic. Yeah, I you know when uh, Travis and I talked about bringing this production up because it is the only real you know theatrical pro equity approved approved theatrical production in, in the country during COVID. Um, I, I not only thought about the audiences and, and how it affected them to actually see live theater during this time, but also the actors. Uh, all of us have been unemployed um, or really unemployable for seven months now. Yeah. So can either of you talk, uh, speak to what it meant to the actors and what they went through and you know what, what did it feel like to, to do this? I mean, I can't even imagine, it's incredible. They were, they were, the 10 of them were in a bubble. So, and we were in the bubble, the Alan Fildeman, the musical director, and I was in, we were all in the bubbles. So we couldn't go out and, you know, talk to any, you know, have drinks or dinner with anybody. So we were all together and they stayed together the whole time. We got tested three times a week. And I don't know if anyone had that cotton swab up their nose, but it's, not it's no fun. It is really not fun. <laughs> They're getting better at it. I have to say that the more recent tests I've had are yeah. less horrible. But man, those early tests, I, I, I think I still have holes in my brain from them. I, I, so, Stephen, it's that thing you don't, they just keep going. 
it just goes. And I know. I didn't. I didn't know that. I that I like my sinus cavity went that far. <laughs> <laughs> but these, these ten people, these ten people were so brave that they. There were times that they just couldn't do it. They were screaming and crying because it's like you know you this the stage manager would say you can't do that. You can't sit in somebody else's home base. You can't do this. You're too close to this person. So they got frustrated, and you know, you know, I, I understand it completely. I gave everyone a break. I was there was a lot of crying. We cried a lot. We cried a lot because to figure it out, we had to cry, and we we made it work. And then no one got sick. Not in the well. Order. That's what I was going to say. You know, if if anybody who has an equity company or I don't know, Governor Newsom, if you're listening, um, or, you know, if, if Governor Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio have tuned in from New York to this program, Jerry and, the, and the, the, they did it. And you ran quite a long time, right? Like, because they extended, yeah, we you know, extend. it, it was it was a several week run and nobody got sick. The cast, yeah. nobody in the cast got sick. No one in the audience to the extent that anyone knows got yeah. sick. They actually pull this off, so this can be done. Is what I'm. I'm here to say to people who are who think it can't be done yet. It can. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the theater's been around for a long time, right? And it's adapted and evolved and everything. And this is just another one of those steps. Hopefully, it's temporary. Yeah. Um, you know, and and we'll we'll see where it lands. But little by little, it seems like people are starting to figure it out. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, well, congratulations to you both. Yeah, thank you. you. And, and, and thank by the you. way, nice to tune in and 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 hear um, hear working, which was unexpected. I didn't know that was going to happen. I'm <laughs> you know sitting there listening to um, that lovely uh, rendition of Millwork, and you know remembering going to James Taylor's apartment on and having him take out these two yellow pads of you know line paper with lyrics scrawled on them and take out his guitar and sing this song. Um, first of all, you're in his apartment and he opens his mouth and you hear the sound and you're like, oh my God, it's James Taylor. I mean, he sounds just like James Taylor. Um, and he played this amazing song, which is, you know, it's still so beautiful to me and, and so, such poignant lyrics. So, you know, I tried to be very, I was, I was very professional about the whole thing. And then when I left, I started to cry. It <laughs> as soon as the door closed behind me, I started to cry. 100% one of, one of my favorite musical theater songs. It's, it's Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, of course. Well, speaking of which, so we have one of your songs coming up next, Stephen. Um, oh, okay. Um, Another surprise. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, Baker's <laughs> Wife. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but thank you both so much for being here. Uh, can't express how nice it is to see you and to be able to do this and to have you here for this. So thank you. Nice to see all of you. Julie, you look beautiful as always. Travis, you look handsome as always. Really nice to see you in this way. I look forward to when we can actually see each other in an actual factual person again. Uh, Same. Yeah. 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 Agree. Bye, Steven. Bye. Oh, Bye, so great to see you guys. Bye. Have a great rest of the evening. Jerry, thank you again. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Thanks for Bye -bye. Being here. All right, you Jerry. Guys, back to, what was that? You guys, it's the, this is my, you know, in, in my life that I go, oh, you know what? I, I wanted this so bad as a kid. You know, like growing up as a kid, go like, oh my God, someday I'd like to meet Steven Schwartz and people like that. And then, you meet them and they're gracious and you oh. talk to them and they call you, you're going, how did I get to be me? It's so mm -hmm. amazing. I'm always, I'm always taken aback by it. I just think it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm completely, completely flabbergasted at how generous and kind and sweet Stephen Schwartz is. Yep. In, in every part, he is the most generous person, I think, in musical theater. He is so kind and so giving of his time and his talents, time and time again. Um, it's, it, it floors me every single time. He just keeps saying yes to people, and it's, it's just beautiful to watch. It really is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't we get to our next piece here? 
But okay. uh, thanks for letting us uh, pop in here, Jerry, and steal, um, you know, oh, some of the time. I, I, I literally thought, oh, it's over now. That's my, my the hosting is over. <laughs> <laughs> you you have a little more to go, mister. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, we're going to, we'll see you later. <laughs> okay.